U.N. Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez met with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky in Ukraine on Thursday. This is the Secretary General's first visit to the country since Russia began its war February 24th. Gutierrez's visits uh, include a tour of areas near Kyiv as well as Bucha to see firsthand what has been happening on the ground. This meeting comes just two days after the Secretary General met with Russian President Putin in Moscow. Joining us now from Zhesha, Poland, is the spokesperson for the U.N. Secretary General, Stefan Dujarek. Stefan, thank you thank so you for much for joining us. Thanks. Absolutely. Uh, as you know, Secretary General Gutierrez met at length with President Zelensky yesterday. What can you tell us about that meeting? What insight do you have? Look, it was a, I think it was a very intense meeting. We were in there for about an hour and a half. Uh, the aim of the meeting was really to reaffirm the United Nations support for the people of Ukraine. Uh, we explained to the president how we were scaling up our operations, trying to reach millions more of Ukrainians uh, who are desperately in need of humanitarian uh, assistance. Um, and of course, we also uh, discussed uh, what had been brought up in Moscow, which was basically uh, how to get uh, civilians uh, out of the uh, steel plant uh, that is currently in, that in Mariupol. The Secretary General also met with Russian President Putin earlier this week and said the meeting was very useful, but uh, Russian troops still fired on Kyiv while, while, while he was there. Will anything convince Putin to retreat? And by the way, um, very close to where the secretary was actually staying. Yes, I mean, we were uh, in the prime minister's office um, yesterday afternoon when we got the report of the missiles uh, hitting Kiev. It was about two, two kilometers away. We were, uh, we were safe. Uh, at all times. I mean, we have condemned and will continue to condemn these uh, missile strikes on what is our apparently and pretty clearly uh, civilian uh, infrastructure. And we also, in that regard, extend our condolences uh, to the journalist from Radio Free Europe uh, who was killed uh, in these bombings. I mean, the fact that there, there was a missile attack on the capital of a country at war um, is not too surprising. Um, you know, the, the Secretary General's aim uh, is was to uh, to speak to President Putin. It's the first face-to-face -face meeting they've had since the start of this of this war of the Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It lasted about two hours. Afterwards, there was a an agreement in principle from the Russian Federation that the UN would work with the International Committee of the Red Cross and Russia and Ukraine to get uh, civilians out of uh, this part of of Mariupol. But, but let's be clear, um, a meeting is not going to end uh, this conflict. Meetings are not ending this conflict. What will end this conflict is when Russia uh, decides to end uh, this conflict. In the meantime, we, uh, in terms of the United Nations and the people who work for the Secretary General, are focused on humanitarian assistance that is needed right now. Mr. Dujarek, you mentioned the, the plan and the agreement to get civilians uh, out, uh, uh, grant them a safe passage, essentially. Uh, the Russians have made these promises before. How can we be assured this time that they will uphold those promises? Look, we are at an extremely delicate point uh, in, in our efforts working with the both sides and the International Red Cross to get civilians out. Um, and so the, for, for us at this very moment, the less details given, the less said, uh, the better chances of, of success. Uh, we should hear uh, as soon as there is something to announce, we will. Uh, but at this point, I think your, your viewers can understand that our focus is on, on getting people out. And so I, I really can't go into any more detail at this point. Understood, it's sensitive. Yeah, it is very sensitive. And we saw some of the atrocities in Bucha. What is the status on the war crimes investigation? And to further that note of what you said, it's going to take Russia to stop this. What's your, I guess, feeling or, or, or what, is, what is the feeling about where and what it will take for Putin to sort of stand his ground or, or back off? I mean, it's, it's, it's a very valid question, but frankly, it's a question that needs to be addressed uh, to someone who speaks on behalf of the Russian uh, government, right? We, we know there are political talks going on, which are led by Turkey, by President Erdogan is, is really kind of hosting that format. And we met with him uh, before heading to, to Moscow. 
um, I, I, it's not to me to make a, a prediction. We have no no crystal ball. What we saw firsthand uh, yesterday was the devastation, the heartbreaking devastation of just a few villages around Kiev. We wouldn't even go to the east where we know things are much worse. Uh, the International Criminal Court Prosecutor's Office is working hard and they've been to Ukraine. Their investigators have been to Ukraine. And that is a, a, a fundamental part on how to get accountability uh, for what has happened. But it is a judicial process which may take some time, but it's we fully support uh, the work of the International Criminal Court in that regard. Certainly a delicate dance with the focus on the civilians during mm -hmm. this horrific war here. Stefan Dujaric, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure.